Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ms. Skoken. We're going to be taking a look at Section 10-4 from our textbook, and it's titled Perimeter and Area in the Coordinate Plane. Our objective is to find the perimeters and areas of figures in a coordinate plane, and our vocabulary is going to include irregular shape, perimeter, and area. Questions 1 and 2 of the warm-up say, use the slope formula to determine the slope of each segment. We remember that our slope formula, we use the variable m to indicate slope, and it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We also think of it as rise over run. So we need the coordinates for our two points, a and b. So we start with the y's, and we're going to have 4 minus 1 over negative 1 with the x's minus negative 3. So that's going to give us 3 over 2. And that's our slope, a positive 3 over 2. And that makes sense. We also remember that we can do counting, rise 1, 2, 3, over run 1, 2. And so that also gives us our slope. Now pause the video and find the slope of segment CD. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your work. I'm betting that number two didn't give you any trouble and you were able to come up with the correct slope of one over six or one sixth. Question number three of our warm up I know you're super excited about because we have worked with radicals and you remember that we need to multiply coefficient times coefficient and radicand times radicand. So try to work that one out yourself and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. See you back in a minute. I'm hoping you had great success with that one and was you were able to come up with the correct answer of 42. If you have a question about that, check out the work and see if you can figure out. If you have a further question, please bring it to class. In example one, number one, we're trying to estimate the area of an irregular shape in the coordinate plane. And you can see that we've got this very odd looking shape and what we want to be able to do is to figure out what the area is of that very irregular shape using the fact that it's on a coordinate plane to help us out. So one of the things that we could do is count boxes. And basically the way that we would do that, and I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit here, is we would document where we have a full square. So for example, we've got one, two, three full squares that I have numbered. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video and number the remainder of the full squares and then turn the video back on so we can continue this question. Now we're going to go back and mark the ones that are about half a square. So we're going to have some that it, it might be hard for us, but we're going to leave them off because they don't quite hit half a square. So let's start counting those. So we've got one there, one there. And so I'm going to have you pause the video, count up the remaining half squares, and then turn the video back on. Okay, I marked all my half squares, and now for us to be able to come up with a total area, we need to count up the whole ones, which is 22, and then we need to count up the half ones. We have 22 whole boxes, and as we count the halves, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like eight halves. So that's going to give us 22 plus four, which is 26 square units. All right, that's one method of doing this. Now, the other method of doing this is for us to draw a composite figure made with a bunch of different shapes that we know the area formula is for, and then add up all of the areas of the different shapes that make up our composite figure. So that means we're going to need to go back to our figure and draw some shapes on top of it. Okay, here's our figure. So I am going to erase what we did before, and then we're going to draw some composite figures on this. You have a choice. You can either copy it and paste it into your notability file, or you can just erase like I'm doing. We definitely only want to use figures that we recognize and we have a formula for. So right here, 
I see a trapezoid. Okay, there's one. I also see an opportunity for a parallelogram right here. So, you know, we said from the beginning on this one, the instructions literally say that we're trying to get an estimate of the area. So it's not going to be exact. What's going to happen is we're going to leave some pieces out and we're going to count some pieces that shouldn't necessarily be counted, but we're trying to get an estimate. So we're using known shapes. We've got two figures so far, and I see an opportunity for a triangle. At this point, I know you can see how this is going. So what I recommend that you do is turn off the video, add your figures in, and then turn your video back on when you're ready to see how mine looks compared to yours. And then you're gonna be figuring out the area of yours, which again, may not be exactly the same as the area of mine. So pause the video now and draw in the rest of the figures. Okay, so the artsy portion of our activity is completed and we have all of these different areas. The next thing that we're gonna to need to do is to add together all of the piece parts of these areas. So we're gonna set it up. I think we've got nine different sections. We're gonna calculate the area for each one of those sections no, using our known area formulas and then we're gonna add all of those areas together of our nine figures. So just so that we have a reference, I'm gonna show the way, one way that we could number them. So figures one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And again, I'm gonna recommend that you pause the video and figure out the area. You know how to calculate areas of these figures. You have all of the formulas given to you in your notes. So set it up so that you're ready to add all of those figure, the area for all those figures together using the area addition postulate. When you've got that work shown, turn the video back on. So I'll see you back in a minute. Whether you used my figures or your figures are slightly different, you ended up with a certain number of figures and you calculated the areas for each one of those. So the very last part of this problem is for us to combine them. We end up with a grand total of 31 square units. Now just a quick reminder, when we worked on the box method, just counting up boxes, you may remember that we ended up with 26 units. Or 26, sorry I forgot the squared, so this should be square units. And when we did the, the box method, counting up the half boxes and the whole boxes, we ended up with 26 units. So that's quite a difference on a little figure like this one, but it was very irregular. So we did the best that we could trying to figure out the total area. Let's take a look at some other examples now on the coordinate plane. Example number two says we're going to be finding perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. Our instructions say draw and classify the polygon with these vertices and then find the perimeter and area of the polygon. So let's start out by plotting these points. I'm going to pause the video, you plot the points, and label them with the point name, like EFG, and then turn the video back on when you're done. Now that we've got the points, draw segments between them. Now that we've got our figure drawn, we can check out the type of figure that it is because we need to draw and classify the polygon. And we see that there are two pairs of parallel sides, meaning that segment HE has a slope of two over three and GF also has a slope of two over three. HG has a slope of 1 over 3, and EF also has a slope of 1 over 3. So when we have two pairs of parallel sides, we have a parallelogram. The next thing that we need to do is to find the perimeter. And in order to find the perimeter, we need to use the distance formula because we need the side lengths of these four sides so that we can add them up together. Now we can see that the pairs of sides are congruent. So segment HE is congruent or the same size as segment FG. So let's write down the distance formula first, and then we'll plug in our values. You may have seen this in pre-algebra or in Algebra 1, but here it is again. 
And we're going to pause the video now to plug in to find the length of segment HG. So negative 1 minus negative 4 turns into a negative 1 plus 4. We're going to square that. And then our y's we will plug in as negative 4 minus negative 3. Remember that we are taking the square root of whatever we end up with. So we're going to have negative 1 plus 4 is 3, 3 squared is 9, and that's going to be added to negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1 squared is 1. So this is going to be the square root of 10, and that's as simplified as that one can get. Just a reminder, that segment HG is the same length as segment EF, so we now have two of the side lengths. Now it's time to use the distance formula again to find the lengths of the other two sides. So pause the video and practice using the distance formula. Turn the video back on when you have an answer. The other two side lengths have a length, or the other two segments have a side length of square root of 13. So now we're able to come up with a total perimeter because it's going to be square root of 10 plus square root of 10 plus square root of 13 plus square root of 13. So in total, our perimeter is equal to 2 times the square root of 10 plus 2 times the square root of 13 units. We're almost done with this question. The last part says to find the area of the polygon, and there are definitely a couple of ways that we can do this because we had the formula for the area of a parallelogram using the diagonals, but there is a faster way with this kind of question because it's on a coordinate plane. We can draw a rectangle around this parallelogram, making sure that our rectangle hits the vertices of the parallelogram. We find the area of this rectangle, which is, of course, just length times width, and then we subtract out the triangles, the right triangles that we see that are around the parallelogram. And we happen to have two pairs of identical triangles. We know that the formula for the area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height, so the bigger one is a base of 3 and a height of 2, and the smaller triangle is a base of 3 and a height of 1. So we go through with 18 minus 2 times, and that's going to be 3 plus 1.5, which is 4.5 times 2 is 9, and so that's going to be 9. 18 minus 9 is 9. So that's going to be 9 square units, and that's the area of the par parallelogram. Using that strategy of finding the area of the figure by drawing a figure around it, specifically a rectangle because we're working on a coordinate plane, and then subtracting the area of the right triangles around our figure, I'd like for you to pause the video for example number three Work on it yourself and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. So after plotting our points, we draw the rectangle and then we draw a rectangle around our rectangle but using the right angles of our coordinate plane. Then find the area of the big green rectangle and subtract out the area of the four small right triangles. We know that it's two pairs of congruent or same size triangles. So we can find the area of two of them and then double it so that we can subtract out what we need to. And that gives us a total area of the pink rectangle of 24 square units. And that's it for this lesson. You are ready to move forward with the practice problems. So I hope you wrote down any questions that you have so that we can talk about them in class. And I'll see you back in class.